we're going to be talking PFF top 101. And unfortunately, I have to address the Kaleeb Williams situation. What is up, Finn fans? Yes, PFF came out with their top 100 of the 2022 season. And we're going to see how many Miami Dolphins are on there. Fun fact, I already know because I already did the research. <laughs> um, uh, but we're going to check that out. And then, of course, USC's Khalib Williams. Caleb. Why did I say Khalib? Caleb Williams. Uh, we're going to talk about it. I was going to avoid it because it's such nonsense. But so many people want me to talk about it. So we're going to talk about it. So let's jump into this. Let's go right into the PFF. Um and it says, here's a quick reminder on our basic criteria. This is a list based solely on um, play in 2022. Past or future play is not accepted, accounted for. Obviously, why would you account for future? You don't know what's going to happen in the future. This isn't about class or talent. It's about performance throughout the 2022 NFL season. This is a list created with uh, an all position all are created equal mantra. So you won't see 32 quarterbacks heading the list, even though... This is the game's most valuable position. Instead, we look, we took a look at how guys played relative to what is expected from their position. Unlike PFF's awards, the 101 factors into the postseason, so some players who won PFF awards may find themselves jumped in 101 by rivals who had a playoff run worthy of changing its rankings. And then they say, disagree with what we say, go follow them on Twitter and let them know at PFF. So, this is what we're going to do. I got him here. Number one, Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to scroll through. We're going to see where the Dolphin players land, if any are on there. There are. And we're going to talk about it. So, let's scroll. We got Joe Burrow, Travis Kelsey, Mackay Parsons, Miles Garrett. There we go. There's our first Miami Dolphin. Uh, 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 that's Tyreek Hill. I, I'm so, I want to get right in the middle, but I'm not going to. So he was number seven on the list of top 101. Hill's impact on the Miami Dolphins offense was obvious this season. He led the league in yards per route run, 3.07, uh, by uh, more than half a yard. And his 48 explosive plays as a pass catcher were one more than Justin Jefferson in second place. He was a true game changer whose pursuit of records faltered when his quarterback was injured. Ooh. Ooh. One more. I got one more. Just one more. One more. Ooh. I want to I want to read that last sentence for you. His he was a true game changer whose pursuit of records faltered when his quarterback was injured. But wait. Peanut Gallery over there. I thought Tyreek Hill made Tua better. I thought Tyreek Hill, the reason Tua was doing so well last year was because of Tyreek Hill. The pursuit of records faltered when his quarterback was injured. So does that mean they helped each other out? Yes, that's exactly what that means. But Tyreek Hill being top 101, top 10, um, of course, he, he was a vital part of the Miami Dolphins offense. You did see his pro productivity drop, like they were saying when Tua wasn't in there. That's a video in itself I'm going to talk about. Um, but I will say this about Tyreek. The fact that he, when it came to the MVP talk, uh, especially off offensive MVP, Justin Jefferson won, rightfully so. But two, uh, Tyreek Hill wasn't two. <laughs> he wasn't behind Justin Jefferson. That's a little that's a little suspicious, especially since he wasn't that far behind him in yards and touchdowns and stuff. But Tyreek Hill is number seven. So that's one dolphin. We're gonna keep going. Justin Jefferson, up oh, right behind him, Lane Johnson, Josh Jacobs, Josh Allen, Andrew Thomas. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know. We're gonna be scrolling for a bit before we hit another dolphin. Scrolling for for a little bit before we hit another dolphin. And stop. Wait a second. Wait a second. Did Tua Tungavailoa break the first half of the top 101 players of the 200 and 220? 
of the 2022 season? I thought he sucked. I heard people tell me he sucked last year. He had bad games. I'm not going to deny that. He had some bad games last year. But I heard he overall sucked last year. Tua was leading an offense that was matching Kansas City and Buffalo's output until concussion first inter- interrupted and then ended his season. He he ended up playing in just 13 games that had a little over 400 dropbacks. But the difference between this year and his career to date is stark. A hundred percent. Tua had a very good year last year. And if you think otherwise, then obviously you have a bias towards him. Because I can show you countless articles. I could show you countless analysts. I can show you countless people that are talking about Tua in 2022 and how good of a season he had. Now, did he have his bad games? Did he falter against the 49ers and the Chargers? Did he crap the bed in the second half regardless of concussion or not? Did he not play a full season? All four of those statements are 100% fact. But you cannot look at his body of work and say he did not have a good season last year. Yeah, Doug, but to say, yeah, of course. And and then people like to bring in the uh, record. Well, he four oh and four in December. Oh, now all of a sudden, team, you know, records is a team is a quarterback stat. I, was, I always find it funny that that teeters. Tua last year went what eight and four, give or take. Eight and four, eight and three, something like that. Quar- oh, that's not a, that's not a quarterback. It's, you know, records aren't a quarterback stat. He went zero and four in December. Oh, that shows how bad to it. You see, you see. Be consistent. To a had bad games in December. I don't even think the first game was in December. If I'm remembering correctly, I think the 49ers game wasn't in December. So I think he only played two games in December or three games in December. No, I looked it up. There's there's four games in December. He played three bad games in December. Three. That Bills game was not a bad game. I don't care what you say. But the fact that that man broke as the 45th on this list of top 101 players of 2022, only four quarterbacks ahead of him. I think it was Jalen Hurts, uh, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, and Patrick Mahomes are ahead of him says volumes and it's not the two and ears it's not two and on it's not to do 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 whatever stupid name you want to come up with for two of fans who cares man he's the miami dolphins quarterback and he broke the top four, the top 50 good for him now to it you need to get your stuff together you need to hold that ninjutsu is working and you stop getting concussed and then continue to develop Plain and simple. Let's move on. Let's see if we can find any other Dolphins on this list. Keep on going. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on keeping on. 56. Derrick Henry. There we go. I might spoil the next one. I'm trying. There we go. Christian Wilkins, number 58. Miami fielded a dramatically improved defensive front this year, and Wilkins was one of the biggest drivers of that. Wilkins had 35 total pressures and was one of the t- just two interior defenders to play more than 1,000 snaps, with Super Bowl champ Chris Jones the only player to top him in workload. Christian Wilkins, I remember when we drafted him, so many people were pissed. They I ended up being right. Christian, and then people his rookie year were like, Christian Wilkins sucks. Look at him. He sucks. Oh, blah, blah, blah. That man needs a contract extension, and he needs to stay a Miami Dolphin. He is the cornerstone. He is the heart and soul of that defense, and he is the biggest reason why the Dolphins had a top five rush defense because he is stopping them in the middle. So many times was he ripping through guards and centers and just blowing things up in the backfield. Christian Wilkins incredibly deserved to be on this list, list and I'm very happy he was. And we don't have to go far for the next one because the next one is 59. Jalen Phillips. Come on. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you're only, it's going to get cut off. I'm not going to get perfect. Jalen Phillips, 59. Phillips may have sacked the quarterback 10 times in each of the first two seasons. Uh, but those two years were very different by almost any other measure. Year two was a huge step forward for former first round pick. He recorded 77 total pressures, including the playoffs. 
almost doubling last season's total. His 49 defensive stops were more than twice his rookie bro- uh, bro- rookie mark. And his PFF grade drop, uh, jumped more than 30 points. Another guy that people are questioning him. Where's Jalen Phillips? I'm not seeing Jalen Phillips. I'm not seeing Jalen Phillips. He was killing it again. Consistent growth from him. And he's just, yes, of course, he didn't get the sacks that we would like to see him see, to get. But there's different criteria. There's different aspects to it. Could it be the scheme? Could it be him? Could it be the fact that they kept taking him off the field on third downs? Could it be the fact that they kept dropping him back into coverage and only sending three at some certain points? There was a ton of problems (laughs) when it came to that. But the growth, and it's another, it's the same situation with Tua Tungavailoa. Where you have people coming out and saying, oh, he wasn't that good last year and this, this, and that. And I could show you countless stats. I could show you countless analysts. I could show you countless articles. All that stuff that talk about Jalen Phillips being one of the top pass rushers up and coming. And people will still, you know, put their nose down to it and say, no, it wasn't that good. No, 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 no. I'm a huge fan of Jalen Phillips. I am a Jalen Phillips stan. If, if I'm going to be labeled as something, I was an Xavier Howard stan, and then he fell off and he broke my heart. Still love him, but I am 100% a Jalen Phillips fan. He reminds me so much of Jason Taylor. Go look at Jason Taylor's stats his first three years. Pair in comparison, and look where he ended up. I'm a huge Jalen Phillips fan, especially because I played that position. Love him. Loved him coming out of the draft, and I'm very happy he's a Dolphin. Let's move on here. We actually don't have to go that far for the next Miami Dolphin, and that is Jalen Waddle. With Tyree Kill putting up record-setting numbers in Miami, Miami's offense for much of the season, it's going to it's going to ignore Waddle's continued success. Waddle almost doubled last year's season uh, per reception figure in the new offense, and passes thrown his way generated 119.2 passer rating. He did have his drop problems, and it wasn't much, but it was in certain situations that killed us, like the Raiders game, uh, the Vikings game with the fumble, um, that playoff game. He had about two drops there that were some were underthrown, but some he should have caught. But Jalen Waddle, this is the other thing that we got to realize, right? Tyreek Hill had a record high in receptions and a record high in yards. And he split that with Jalen Waddle, who also had a th- over a thousand yards receiving. Like the fact that both of these guys were eating and both of these guys were getting fed nicely by Tua Tonga Vailoa says volumes to how those three guys work together. And again, I have a video plan. There's a, a stark difference when Tua was on there with the production of these two, a very big difference. And then, unfortunately, for the final Miami Dolphin, we really got to scroll. Like, I'm talking really, really, really got to scroll. And Connor Williams, 98. The only uh, upgrade of the Miami Dolphins offensive line to make it through the entire season. Connor Williams played 1,127 snaps this season, allowing just 16 total pressures over 18 games. He finished with an 85.6 PFF run block grade, which was a huge upgrade over last year. And his penalties dropped. A lot, I know when he came in, a lot of people were worried. Oh, his penalties, his penalties, his penalties. They dropped. And I told you when we signed him, after looking at his body of work, that it was an anomaly last year, him having so many penalties. Big signing and a big addition. Would I keep him at center? I'm still very scared of his snapping. If the Dolphins can go get a true center, move him to left guard, I think that would solidify this offensive line. To have Robert Hunt as true center, um, Connor Williams, and then... Um, Teron Armstead, this offensive line would be ridiculous. But I don't see why they wouldn't keep him at center. Again, he broke the top 101 of last year. But that is your top 101. The Dolphins had six players. Tyreek Hill, Tua, Wilkins, Phillips, Waddle, and Connor Williams. I'm surprised Robert Hunt wasn't up there. Um, and when they said the only upgrade to the Miami Dolphins in the line that didn't play the entire season, I could have swore Robert Hunt played the entire season. Unless I am wrong. Let me look that up. Yeah, Robert Hunt played the entire season. I wonder why they said that. But yeah, I'm surprised Robert Hunt didn't make the make the top 101. Or Teron Armstead. But again, Teron Armstead, he was dealing with a nagging injury. And his play dropped at some points in the season. 
um, especially the Houston Texans game before he got injured. And there were some other games um, where he was allowing some unwarranted pressure. And you could tell that his the amount of injuries he was dealing with started to stack on him. But that is how many Dolphins made it in the top 101. Um, I was genuinely surprised. I know I got a little like, <laughs> with Tua, I was genuinely surprised he was 45. I didn't think he'd be that high. I thought they would have, you know, put another quarterback or another player ahead of him. But I'm happily surprised he was at 45. And I'm happily surprised we got six players on there. But that is awesome. But comment below. Let me know what you guys think of the order. Do you think they snubbed some Dolphins? Do you think that is the appropriate amount of Dolphins that made the list? Comment below. And, of course, yes. I'm going to address the Caleb Williams situation. So, if you guys don't know, Caleb Williams was interviewed. Uh, he's the 2022 Heisman Trophy winner. And he was interviewed about where he would like to be drafted. And this is what he had to say. I like to be around a young coach. I'd probably go to the Dolphins. I also want to be able to play with Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Mike Kaziki. The defense isn't bad. That's probably my number one spot. I also like the colors. The colors are pretty cool. And the weather's good. I'm going to read his whole entire quote. Because that's where I noticed some stop. I can't say right now what I'll do. The expectation from everybody would be that I would leave and go pro. But that would be very, very... That would be very, very in the moment kind of decision after speaking uh, to family members and mentors that I believe um, and, and trust their words. San Fran, Raiders, Falcons, uh, I play anywhere. So he said that the Dolphins would be his number one spot, but he said he played anywhere. Now, the reason that this became such a, a such a thing, Tyreek Hill liked the post. So all of a sudden, people are like, who? Oh. Well, Tyreek Hill liked the post, which means Tyreek Hill wants uh, Caleb Williams to be his quarterback. And that means this and that means that. And that people are pulling at straws. People are digging for information. People are trying to make something out of nothing. Because a man liked to post. Like, you got it. Really? It's Now, I can't really say really because it's that part of the season. But, like, come on like are we really doing this right now the man said that he would love to play with Tyreek Hill I would also would be able to play with Ty I'd like I'd probably go to the Dolphins I also would be able to play with Tyreek Hill Jalen Waddle Mike Kaziki. yeah he wants to play with Tyreek Hill who doesn't if I was Tyreek Hill I'd like to post man I appreciate you wanting to play with me thank you uh, I'm the best at my position. Thank you. I appreciate that. Who cares? And then people make it out that, oh, he's he's giving shade to two. And I know for a fact that they all talk. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Tua, Javon Holland. They all talk. They all hang out. They're all close. Everything. Do you think Tua grabbed his phone and was like, yo, man, why would you like that post? You know, okay, I don't, you know, okay. he's like, good for it. Yeah, man, I want to play with you too. Oh, wait, I do. And then Gaziki comes out and says, uh, Caleb, they tell you I'm staying in the Dolphins though in 2024. I'm just trying to figure out uh, if I should lease my condo or not. Again, making a joke and Javon Holland laughed at that joke because Mike Gaziki's probably not going to be with the Dolphins next year. So Caleb saying that is like, wait. Caleb, I'm not going to be here next year. So I doubt I'll be here in 2024. So it's all a joke. It's nothing serious. But again, certain people want to, to find anything they can to take any type of shot, shade, whatever they can at Tua when it has nothing to do with Tua. So there you go. I addressed it. I wasn't going to address it, but a lot of you guys wanted me to. It's dumb. It's dumb. I'm trying to think of an analogy that I... Uh, like somebody saying, oh, I would love to work with Dougley Do Wrong, um, but it would, you know, say I had a partner, right? Say DDW, Dougley Do Wrong, or it was something else. It's called like Dolphins, Dolphins Talk In or Dolphins Insight. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know. This is the reason why it's called Dougley Do Wrong, because um, I can't think of names. And I had a partner with me. And somebody tweeted out, I would love to be Dougley Durong's co-host on 
uh, Dolphins Insight go. I'd like that post. I'm like, I appreciate that, man. Do you think my partner is going to be like, so you want to replace me? No, man, he's giving me a compliment. And I appreciate that. So dumb. It's just so dumb. So I addressed it. I'm not addressing it anymore. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I, I, I have so many videos planned. Like so many. But then things keep happening and, and interesting stuff happens. And then I push videos back. Like I still got to do the AFC East ranking final for 2022. There's a video I'm going to do where I'm going to talk about the Miami Dolphins with and without Tua. And how that needs to be addressed. I have so many film breakdowns and so, so much. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, we are less than 150 away from 40,000. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. When we break 40K, I will go live. So keep an eye out. Because if I go live, that means we did it. Um, and yeah, other than that, I'll see you in the next one. But like usual, stay classy. I'm out.